It's a joy to be with you this evening as we come to worship and to praise God. I'm glad that each one of you is here and we seek the Lord's leading and his power through the Holy Spirit to help us to understand and to know God better. I want to read from Ephesians chapter 1 verses 1 to 14 to help us focus our minds upon our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Paul is writing to the church in Ephesus and he says these words, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. He made known to the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfilment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of the truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of his glory. Praise God for his wonderful word. We'd like to take your copy of God's word and open it to Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven, and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. So read God's word, amen. We're going to study this passage. Psalm 121, safe in the arms of Jesus safe in the arms of Jesus. Our culture has become risk adverse. For some safety has become the be all and end all of all their lives. Safety is important. We teach our children road safety, how to keep safe in the home, online and out in the streets. As we learn to drive, we learn road safety. We install antivirus software for our computers 
and digital devices to keep us safe from harmful hackers and abusers. There is safety at work regulations. We take out various insurances to protect ourselves or financial protection to provide when our loved one dies. Christians fight for the protection of the unborn in the womb against those who would murder the innocent. The armed forces of a country protect their borders from invasion and enemy attack. We get warning alerts sent to our mobile phones. There is copyright law as a form of intellectual property law. But let me ask you this question. Who will protect you? Maybe you look to the government, the police, your husband, your wife, your children. Certainly, the roles of those just mentioned includes protection. Who are you looking to for protection? We all need help at times in life. The Beatles used to sing, I get by with a little help from my friends. Local councils have here to help schemes. Where do you go when you need help? Do you call on family, friends, church family? Do you dial 999? It's good to have a support system in place, but we need to look further than that. History and experience teaches us that no safety plan, no insurance policy, no security system can keep you absolutely safe in this life. You can follow all the safety rules, Take every precaution, exercise and eat well, and things still go wrong. That's why we need to look to God for our help. We have heard the phrase, God helps those who help themselves. But the Bible teaches us that God helps those who seek his help. None of us are safe until we take refuge in God. Thankfully, God is the helper of the helpless. In this psalm, we learn who God is all over again. God is our protector. He will protect his people. The word keep or watches over is used six times in this psalm. The frequency of use is to get our attention because this is the message the psalmist wants to convey. God will protect you. Friends, if the busyness of life and life's worries are weighing you down, you are to rest in the assurances that God gives us in this psalm. Hold tight to the truth found in this psalm as it applies to all God's children as we continue to journey in this world. So I have three points for us this evening. Firstly, the creator is your helper. Secondly, the God of Israel is your protector. And thirdly, the Lord will keep you from all harm. So let's look at verses 1 to 2, where we find our first point. The creator is your helper. The creator is your helper, verses 1 to 2. The people of God would travel to Jerusalem for one of the three main annual Jewish festivals. As they traveled, the pilgrims would sing songs as they made their ascent to the temple. In our Bible, we have a group of psalms that have been given the title Songs of Ascent. They are found in Psalms 120 through to 134. As Jews made their journey toward the temple, 
safety would be a concern for them. Travelling through the mountains and in the valleys would be there would be trip hazards. Heat exhaustion or illness due to the cold night was a strong possibility. Then there were the robbers, the thieves, the bandits who would lie and wait, ready to pounce. The psalmist wants the people of God to know and cling to the truth that God is their protector. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The psalmist encouraged the reader to look beyond the mountains to the God who created them. Mountains are symbols of strength and stability. They are great in size, long lasting and their appearance is regular. The creation reflects the creator. So the God who made the mountains is even greater in power and strength. The hills are also upward in direction. We tend to look down when we are in trouble. Our faces are downcast. Our focus is on our troubles and all our problems down here. And they just tend to drag us down further. But don't look down. That's the wrong direction. The hills are reminded that we are to look up. You must lift your eyes to the mountains. But don't stop there. Are you looking high enough? You must look beyond the mountains to the God who created them because God is higher than all. As the pilgrims made their way to Jerusalem, they would have looked up to see the hills, the mountains, but they would have also been looking up to see Jerusalem and the temple, the dwelling place of God. The psalmist wants them to look beyond the mountains and focus their gaze and attention upon the Lord. Psalm 46 verse 1 tells us, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. We read in Psalm 90 verse 2, Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. God is bigger than the mountains and God is before the mountains. We don't look to the mountains for our strength, but the mountains get our eyes off our problems and lift our eyes up towards God who can help us in our time of need. Now, we are not living in a mountainous region, but we do have the beautiful Chilton Hills. In times of trouble or when downcast, getting outside can be a good remedy. We can see God's creation. We see the hills, but look to the one who made the hills. Look past the creation to the creator. As Pastor Josh Moody writes, nature is not the solution. It points to the solution. Look beyond the mountains to the God who created them. In verse 1, the psalmist asks, where does my help come from? The answer is given in verse 2. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Where does your help come from? God's children receive their help from the maker of heaven and earth. God not only made the mountains, he made everything. The Lord is the source of your help. We read in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. 
And Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 12 says, God made the earth by his power. He founded the world by his wisdom and stretched out the heavens by his understanding. These passages teach us that the maker of the heaven and the earth has unlimited power, wisdom, and understanding. He has all the resources and more to meet your every need. In his hand is the earth, and he is your helper. God is not only the creator, but he is involved in his creation. The scriptures teach us that God is involved in every aspect of his creation. And that includes you, brother and sister. We call God's power over all creation, his providence. The 1689 Baptist Confession of Faith helpfully states that God, the good creator of all things, in his infinite power and wisdom, upholds, directs, arranges and governs all creatures and things from the greatest to the least by his perfectly wise and holy providence to the purpose for which they were created. He governs according to his infallible foreknowledge and the free and unchangeable counsel of his own will. His providence leads to the praise of the glory of his wisdom, power, justice, infinite goodness, and mercy. What a difference it makes to know the creator of the universe is your helper and your friend. How big is your problem today? Now compare it to the maker of heaven and earth. I think it's safe to say God's got this. Gerard Williamson writes, because God controls the universe, chance is ruled out. And because it is God who controls the universe, fate is also ruled out. We live in a world neither of chance nor fate. No matter what they are saying to us, this is God's world. And God's providence means that nothing can happen to you outside of God's will and providential care. What is the source of your help? Psalm 121 tells us it is the maker of heaven and earth. He is our source of our help. That is the first truth we learn from this psalm. The creator is your helper. The second truth the psalmist helps us to see is that the God of Israel is your protector. Verses 3 to 6. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. These verses teach us that God is not only the creator of the world, but the protector of Israel. And he is your protector as well. Carefully notes that the name for God is the Lord. And when you see Lord spelled out in all capital letters like that, the Hebrew word is Yahweh, which is God's covenantal name. It is a name that speaks of God's covenant relationship with his people and his faithfulness to them. Christians today are in Christ and therefore they are also in relationship with the Lord. Brothers and sisters, you are part of God's covenant people and you can trust God's faithfulness to you in Christ. When you read the Old Testament and see how God washed out for Israel 
and took care of them, you can rest assured that he is doing the same for you. Remember what I said, the key word was in this psalm, keep or watches over. Let's repeat it again and again. If you are in Christ, then he who watches over Israel watches over your life as well. The God of Israel is your protector. He is your bodyguard. And here in verses 3 to 6, the psalmist tells us some of the various ways that God watches over you. Are you paying attention? Firstly, God protects you from accidents. Or as verse 3 puts it, he will not let your foot slip. When you build your life on God and his word, you are on solid ground. You have a firm foundation for your feet and for your life. We read in Psalm 37, the Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. There are no accidents for those who put their faith in Christ. Everything that happens in your life takes place under God's providential care. Nothing happens by chance. Nothing happens by fate. God knows everything and he is in control of everything. And it is in his providence things happen. But we will not ultimately fall or fail because we are on solid ground in Christ. So God protects you from all accidents. Second, we, we note that God never slumbers nor sleeps. Look at verse 3 to 4. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will never slumber nor sleep. This is in contrast to the pagan gods we meet in Scripture. Can you think of a time when the pagan gods were asleep at a critical point? 1 Kings 18, we read about the prophets of Baal trying to reach their god. When Baal didn't respond, Elijah teased them. Shout louder, surely he is a god. Perhaps he is deep in thought or busy or traveling. Maybe he is sleeping and must be awakened. The implication here is if your God is sleeping when you need him, you don't have much of a God, do you? But our God, the God of the living word, is never, never asleep. He's always awake. He never falls asleep on the watch. People who used to work on the night shift at my previous employment in the high secure psychiatric hospital were not meant to fall asleep, but they did. Especially when they were on a one-to-one -one with a patient. God never dozes or nods off. He never ever gets distracted. You can pray to him at any time and he will always focus his attention on you and hear your prayers. As God never slumbers nor sleeps, it means that you can. Because God is awake, you can sleep. Cast your mind back when um, your child, if you've had children, had, was to go off to sleep. And sometimes they couldn't sleep. So what did they want? They wanted you to lie beside them. And you promised to stay by their side until they fell asleep. Then they trustfully would fall asleep knowing that you are there to watch over them. It's the same way with God. It doesn't matter what problem you're dealing with. You can leave it in God's hands and go to sleep at night knowing that God never slumbers nor sleeps and he will take care 
of your problem and he will take care of you. Thirdly, God is close beside you. Look at verse 5. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The hills may be far away in the distance, but God is the shade at your right hand. He is close beside you. King David wrote in Psalm 16 verse 8, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. God told Jacob in Genesis 28 verse 15, I am with you and will watch you Watch over you wherever you go. Verse 5 means that God accompanies you every step of the way. He is close beside you. Fourthly, we learn in verse 6, God protects you at all times. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The pilgrims who travelled to Jerusalem faced many dangers along the way. And sunstroke was a real danger during the day. And there were often extreme changes of temperatures between day and night. The moon was associated with lunacy, also called moonstroke. Additionally, there was also the danger of bandits and wild animals at night. There were dangers both day and and night on the road. But in verse 6, we get the assurance the traveller needs. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. We read something similar in Psalm 91. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. What the Hebrew language is doing here is to use pairs of opposites words to signify totality. So when we read that the sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night, what it really is saying is that God always protects you. Both day and night and everything in between. God is present to help you with every problem in your life. The God of Israel is your protector. The creator is your helper. And as we see thirdly, the Lord will keep you from all harm, verses seven to eight, our third and final point, the Lord will keep you from all harm. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. Verses one to six were all in the present tense, describing what God does for you. Now in verses 7 to 8, we are given promises for the future, telling us what God will do for you. Here is the one overriding general principle from the psalmist. The Lord will keep you from all harm. And there are several things we can learn from these verses. Firstly, God watches over every aspect of your life. That's what... We read in verse 7, The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The word harm here can mean evil. Jesus taught us to pray something similar in the Lord's Prayer when we ask our Heavenly Father and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God watches over every aspect of of your life. God doesn't say you will never have problems, but he promises to be with you in your problems and to turn all your problems to good. 
We have a whole string of beautiful promises in Romans chapter 8 that assure us that God is directly involved in our lives and that he is for you, not against you. Listen to these words. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Once again, these verses do not teach us that you will never have problems or trouble in your life, but rather that evil will never win out. That nothing can thwart God's purpose for your life. Nothing can separate you from God's love for you in Christ. God is for you, and therefore no evil, no permanent harm can befall the believer in Christ. You can trust God's providential care because God watches over every aspect of your life. Secondly, in these verses, God watches over every transition in your life. Verse 8, the Lord will watch over your coming and going. It's usually the transitions in life that trips us up, isn't it? Once we are safe in our routines, things usually go smoothly. But it's the in-between times, the commute, the move, the change of jobs, the change of health, the change of relationships. It's the in-between times that is when we usually struggle. Verse 8 is another example of the Hebrew language using the pair of opposites to express totality your comings and goings and everything in between it's not just the transitions in life god watches over all the in-betweens as well whether at home or shopping or work or when we're away whatever you do wherever you go you are safe because god is with you and thirdly we have the wonderful promise at the end of verse 8 the Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore God is watching over you now and he will continue to watch over you forever both of those promises are encouraging If you had to choose one or the other, which would you choose? Now or forevermore? It's a tough choice, isn't it? But praise God that you don't have to choose. They are both true for the believer in Christ. Hebrews 13 verse 8 says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. Brothers and sisters, God promises to watch over you in Christ is true today, it's true tomorrow, and it's true forevermore. The psalmist have moved us from God as creator of heaven and earth, to God as your protector of Israel, to God as your personal Lord and Saviour who protects you from all evil and harm brothers and sisters as christians we are pilgrims upon this earth we are traveling to our eternal destination psalm 121 is a wonderful song for the journey today 
Know and understand that the maker of heaven and earth watches over every aspect of your life. He protects you from all harm. There are no accidents for those who belong to God. This should reduce your anxiety levels and helps us not to be afraid of the unknown. Nothing can happen to you without God's knowledge. No harm can come to you under his protective care. Even the worst things can happen to you, whether it's illness, loss, or even death. All these things take place under God's providential care. These things that God permits to happen to us in his will may hurt us, but they will not harm us. God is for you, not against you. He is committed to your good and you can trust in him in all things. Brothers and sisters, take comfort in these truths. Learn to trust God in all things and to look for the good in all the details of life. God cares for you. He will provide for you. He is there to help you. Lift your eyes to Jesus Christ tonight. As we begin a new week, God is not just with us on Tuesdays, Thursdays or Saturdays. He is with us all the time. Our going out and coming in. He is not just with us in our homes or when we go shopping when we have a good week or when we have a week that's been a total disaster. He is with us all the time. Jesus' gift to us is the Holy Spirit who is our helper, comforter and guide. He dwells within us forever and that he will never leave or forsake us is a cause for great joy and comfort. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Let us draw fresh strength that God's mercies are new every morning. Amen. Amen.